Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session about exploring data sets with Kibana. Um, I'm not known here, so I'm Nicola Frankel. I'm a consultant. I'm working for SFP. Yes, I'm working for SFP. Oh, it's good? Good. Um, so uh, I, I'm working for uh, uh, on a product called Hybris, which is an e-commerce platform based on Java and Spring. So that's how I, I earn my salary every day. And at night, I do a lot of other stuff like uh, uh, blogging or writing books or here speaking. And uh, sometimes I can ev even write stuff like plugins for, for Elasticsearch, but just for fun. But I need to have a job. Eh? OK, so who doesn't know about Kibana? So this is, sorry? Doesn't know. OK, that's good. So this is the kind of stuff you have with Kibana, and you have a lot of widgets, and everything is graphical, and, and everybody is happy, and it's a good marketing tool. And um, yeah, that's good. And generally, this is more like the stuff like you do with Kibana, system monitoring, which is a little less uh, fun, but it's still very effective. And so you've got this, this set widget and these this set dashboards, and you can, you can monitor your system. And, but you can also do business monitoring. And for me, that's much more interesting because, I mean, system monitoring, you don't need to be a, a, an engineer to do that. You say, OK, I will have the CPU, I will have the memory, I will have the file disk usage, and then I'm done, and it's OK. Mm. But for business monitoring, you, you, you need to know a lot more about your data. You, you need really to, 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 to first to understand them, how they are modeled, and, and you would need to, to craft every widget, every dashboard according to it. And for me, I think there is a problem because um, many people were, who are trying to do stuff with Kibana, they, they have a, a already a, a, a view of their data, which is good. So that they design their widget around them and, and then they, they never update them afterwards. So they stay as they are. And, and the problem is that the data is living and you, you can use your, um, your, your Kibana dashboard to the get insights into more your data. So this is completely wrong in my opinion. Um, you know, there is a lot of stuff about data science and we are all gonna uh, lose our job if you uh, don't do data science. And, and I mean, I, I am not a data scientist, I'm just a simple developer. And um, I, I'm not great at, uh, at Hadoop or this kind of stuff. Um, but I believe that with Kibana, you can still um, get insight into your data, that you can ask your data some questions and you get, can get the answer pretty quickly, even if you are not a data scientist. Um, so even Barak is, is approved, yeah, so it's a good thing. Um, so I, I will do a, a little demo about that. So what I did is I, I, uh, I used David Pilato's plugin, and so I've got tweets that are talking about uh, Kotlin and Java. And of course, I forgot the most important part of the stuff. Don't worry, it's going to work out in the end. That you, you might be able to cut that afterwards. Hmm? Sorry about that. I print the paper, and of course, I forgot it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so funny. Okay, great. So this is basically all my tweets. Okay, so you can see that happened yesterday. I don't have that in real time. And uh, you can even see that at the end of the day, I had a power outage at home, which cuts the Wi-Fi, which is not super funny. So the, the, the first thing we, we can do is, okay, I have all tweets about, about Java and Kotlin. And uh, let's check, um, yeah, what are the tweets w which are only about Java? Um, then we can do a, a simple Lucene query. And there is some processing. And we already have something interesting. So you, you can already ask your, your tweets about, okay, which are the ones which are really only about Java? Because we have a lot of stuff and we want to to search through it. The second question is, 
yeah, it seems that sometimes we've got stuff that are related to jobs in Java. And I want, I want, I'm not interested in job at all. Um, so I, I want to remove some stuff that is not about hiring. Still, I refine my query, I get a little more interesting results, and we can also remove stuff that is not about jobs because obviously it's another trouble. Mm, I, every time I refine more about my data. And uh, by using, keep so far so good? No question? So I, I might be interested here, I have a, a lot of stuff, I have the text, I have many different information. I might be interested first in only the text, for example. So I can add the text and then it's much more readable. So I can really try to understand. Now it's pretty good, right? It's more about real Java. I still have about coffee, so I could remove the coffee keywords and this kind of stuff, but much better now. And um, I might be also interested in um, asking, okay, but I would like to have the tweets with the, 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 mo the people who are leaders in, 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 uh, I I on Twitter. Like, you know, you have these Twitter uh, followers account. Who everybody is using Twitter, right? And everybody is trying to get more followers than a neighbor because, I mean, it's a sign of prestige, right? So le let's say that we want to have the people who are the leaders there, and um, I will also remove Androids, and I, I use the, 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 um, the field user follower accounts, and it must be up to 500 till whatever you want. So we remove all tweets that are from people who have lower than 500 followers, because I mean, honestly, we don't care about them so much. Then we m might continue doing that. And uh, for example, um, again, we, we might want to, to have more information that is displayed here. For example, we can be interested about uh, the number of followers. And so it's about the user. So that's also very important that you, you must know about every field. And here at the end, I will show you that the, the, the template I use is not so great. So I think it's, um, so I will add the user screen name. So who did that? And I will use the followers count here. So that's how ca I can have a nice neat table about only the information that I care about. Now we might go further, and um, you can see that if I uh, type something here, you, uh, I, I, can, I can unfold th that field. And for example, here I type my query in Lucene uh, syntax, which you might not be super familiar with, and it's hard to put that in, in the hands of, of, um, of a business user, but it's possible to do that completely graphically. For example, here, I will, I want to have only the tweets that are in English. So I can here see, first I see the breakdown. So I have more than 50% uh, of, the the, of the tweets that are in English. I can add the filter. And here you see that it changes my data, which is pretty interesting. And it appears here. So you can see here that I can easily enable or disable the filter. So I can really play with all the filters. I can have multiple filters, I can enable them, I can disable them, I can add them together or not. Uh, it's always possible if you know what you are doing to uh, change your stuff here. Like for example, I want the stuff that is in Spanish. And it's also possible to invert it. So here I have all the tweets that are in Spanish, and I can say I want all the tweets that are not in Spanish.
So it, th this kind of stuff is very easy to do. It's completely unrelated to uh, those kind of dashboards that I showed you before. It's not graphical, it's just table, table but it, it can give you insight into your data anyway. And the good thing is that um, with this stuff, you can say, okay, here I might have a peak that I might be interested in. So you can select something and it will automatically check only this period of time. I will get back to yesterday. Also, this is broken down automatically, but you want to see the number of, of tweets every minute. And of course, it depends because if you have too, 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 too much data, then it, it won't be uh, available because it won't be displayed. So it's scaled here to 10 minutes. So that's the number of tweets per 10 minutes. And again, you can say, oh, this is that's interesting. Here I have a peak. So what happens here? And you can see what happens at the exact time. And this doesn't require any engineering skill, any uh, knowledge of the uh, uh, Lucene syntax or anything. It's just simple manipulation of that. Okay, so let's save that for now and call it, uh, no, I want um, tweets table, not in Spanish. it's not in Spanish okay no question further okay I can use that now on the dashboard and add the search that I created takes a little time of course and you can resize it so here no graphical display just simple data a and, and and you can play with it you can oh what happened uh, field data is disabled on text fields by default sorry about that that's a good point for a demo never try anything that you never played with before uh, but anyway you can still uh, you, you you normally you you could still uh, depending on on your index you could still order it and whatever and I will save it and say tweets dashboard. Okay, thanks. And now let's go on to some visualization. Get back to my stuff that I printed. So I, I will do the same. So I will reuse this exact same query because I'm pretty lazy, but I want to display it in a graphical way so I can say here I want to have a vertical bar I use the Twitter index I type the query so the exact same query the count is what I want and then on the x-axis I want aggregate it like I did on the discover panel I want ag aggregate it by that histogram. Okay, so I choose that histogram. There is only the timestamp that plays at the role of the date, so it's good. And then I can apply the changes, and then I can have the same stuff. Hmm. Can say yesterday, so I can have different way of things, and then I can save it, and then. I can say tweets, uh, not hiring, jobs, Android, with many followers. Getting back to the dashboard, yes, thanks about that. Uh, probably I did something wrong. So what I will do is I will remove it. Refresh, refresh, yeah, might might go well. I will just re-add them, and then I will re-add them here.
So you see the little bar until the little bar has stabilized, it means it's computing. Okay. You can order them around all up to what you want if you want to have a nice table here. I mean, again, it's graphical. You can play with it, have the results you want. And that's pretty good, right? Now, let's say that I want to have a breakdown. I want to have a breakdown per language. So I want to see in a dedicated time frame how much, how, how much, how many tweets were uh, tweeted in, in a dedicated uh, language. I have this information and then you can have a new visualization. And I mean, the, the hardest part in that case is to find the right widget. So in that case, I would say, okay, let's use a Pi because it might be good. Take the nice index, the count is the right stuff. And then I need to, chain to, to check for the language here. So it's a term. And then I have to find the one which is a term, which is a long, long way because it should be long or use a long. I never remember. And because I found use a long first, I will use this one. You choose the number of languages you want to display because at some point, I mean, they are irrelevant. You don't care so much about them. So you can say five, 10, depends on your use case. Never forget to apply the changes. And you can see the breakdown. And of course, this is dependent on the time frame here. So depending on the time, uh, you might have uh, no quick uh, absolutes. Uh, yesterday, we were the 13 from, uh, let's say, 12 o'clock. So it changed a little bit, but not so much, OK? Now that is interesting. But suppose that we want to have this widget that displays the same. So I want for every bar to have the breakdown by language. I don't want to do it to be its overall because depending on the time of the, uh, of the day, of the time of the night, uh, we might see that uh, at some point the Chinese are more active or the English are more active or whatever. Well, it's super easy. You can, you can go here and start editing the stuff. And uh, in that case, you would add sub buckets. So we are grouping by date, but now we want to group even, even lower. So we add another, another, le another level. And it's the same stuff. It's a term, and then you find the field, and the field, again, it's easier to say, the no, not this one this one okay here five my is good because if I have too many for each bar it's not so interesting and here we can already see how how it's made and you see that for example at this point in time yeah the English tweets were much bigger than any other one or you can do that by Ascending. So in that case, it's deprecated. Great, too bad, but it still works. <laughs> so here, you see that the Japanese tweets here are, are, are more important. OK. Now, I told you before, I, I had stuff in Java, I had stuff in Kotlin, and I want for example, to display both on the same on the same widgets. And by default, there it's not possible. At least I don't I, I don't know any way to do that easily. And perhaps you can correct me, but uh, I, I didn't find any way to do that. And you have this time alliance stuff. And time lion is quite interesting because it's another stuff to learn. It's this kind of syntax. So you say elastic search and you say query equals, and then you put your query, text Java, and then you add a comma to separate, and you do the same and saying Kotlin. 
And of course, today nothing happened. So it must be yesterday. And yesterday, this is the sum stuff that you have. And now you can have two different metrics on the same, on the same dashboard, which is super interesting. Of course, uh, you could also be interested in the ratio of Kotlin tweets versus the ratio of Java tweets, because as you know, uh, Kotlin is now super popular because it's, it's accepted on Android. It's supported on Android. So you can say, okay, I will divide What did I do wrong? No, it's good. So here I have the ratio and you can see that, yeah, at this point in time, it was more inter uh, I mean, the Kotlin were uh, nearly uh, getting back to, uh, to, to, to Java level, at least nearly half of them, which is pretty good. And it doesn't stop there because you can also add uh, the Kotlin metric itself here and the Java metric here. So you can have everything into the same dashboard. Of course, uh, here it's not super great because I mean, the, the number has, are, are absolute here and they are relative there. So the, the stuff here is, I mean, you don't see nothing, right? Uh, yeah, don't worry. What we can do is we can multiply them. Then I did something wrong. Might be, or I might be just. Chroma is missing. Yeah, thank you very much. And now I've got something that is readable again, and you can see much more. So you, you can manipulate the number as you want. And again, you can you can save that uh, as as a, as a, as a, as a Kimene dashboard panel or as a timeline. The problem is, you if you choose uh, chose that, that's good. Then you can add it to a dashboard, but it gets harder afterwards to to update it easily with this stuff. So you need to copy paste it into the I into the query. But poof, don't worry. So um, let's say Kotlin Java ratio. Okay, and afterwards you can add it to the dashboard like any other widget. Ration, no ratio. <laughs> okay, oh, that might be interesting. We can go to saved objects and we can uh, get the visualization and then We can just rename it because it's possible. So now it's ratio, which is a good thing to do. So you can also, once a visualization or a search has been saved, you can go back and edit it using any mean you, you find necessary. I still uh, have some time because it seems that 30 minutes, it's eight o'clock. Go on. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I thought I was, I would be slower, uh, faster, sorry. Um, the, the last thing that I want to show you is how you can, you can use a map because really the map is one of the most interesting stuff you can find. Um, so if you, if you have localized your data, like tweets, they are localized, they, they originate from somewhere. You can create a, a new visualization and um, here. Okay, I don't know why I have this kind of stuff, but anyway, uh, and, and we can have the same. So I can, I can do here the same stuff. I can copy paste it, go back to visualization. You see that it keeps the state, which is super good. And on geo coordinate, I only have one field, which is uh, the geo hash, because the template has been modified for that. And uh, 
might take some time, but here you should have a nice map. I need to close everything. Um, should be good. Uh, I need internet. Uh, yeah, I, I can share mine. I already have it, thanks. And now I, I, I that's what I was afraid of. Yeah. Now I've got mails and stuff and yeah. Yes. And now the, 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 the interesting stuff is that here you've got a lot of tweets about Java. Who can tell me why? Java. Yeah, because there is uh, the island there. Yeah. And that's pretty fucked up. I don't want those tweets. I'm only interested about the real Java, not some geographical point. So I can say, like I did before, I can select a place there. And I will see only here. And then I can invert it. And now I've got the real stuff, the real Java language stuff that I want. OK? And then I can save that and say tweets map. And then I can add it on the dashboard. And it's a visualization, it's a tweet map. Takes a little time because my bucket is super small. I might change it if I don't get the stuff. Okay, and now if you have everything into the same dashboard, that's super great because again, you can refine, like for example, I might be interested in European stuff. So I can add it there, and you see that since the filter is added from a widget, but it still is able to filter everything on every widget of the same dashboard. Yes, but you can do the same here, for example. Sorry. No, because I inverted the filter. Yeah, but it's still, it's the same thing as the, the, it's not that they are not talking about, that they don't have some people in Java. They don't still talk about Java in Java. Yeah, true. But I, I mean, uh, again, we are talking about data science. So I say people who are talking about Java language in Java, there might be so few, I don't care so much about them. Yeah. So I filter, I, I filter them out and it's good. And, and again, you, ca you can do, do that also like this. And you, ca you can choose a dedicated time frame and then everything will get modified. So you are asking only tweets where the European is supervised? Yes, of course, of course. In that case, you need to have the data first in, in, into your Elasticsearch index. And uh, by default, the, I mean, you, you need to have a dedicated template also. If you checked about... Um, the index itself, I mean, I did really a super crappy job. I just copy pasted what David did. And David, I don't remember, he did that like two or three years ago. And the Twitter API had, uh, has changed in that time. Yeah. So here you can see that you've got a lot of stuff uh, with, I mean, here might be the most interesting place, blah, 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 blah. If you, if you look at that, you can see here that, I mean, that's really crappy, right? Um, so I, I will just finish here. I say that you, you can, uh, Kibana can do a lot of stuff, but uh, it cannot uh, replace uh, the proper I indexing templates. Uh, you really have to think about that. Um, for example, one of the th thing I used Kibana for was to um, search for the, the, the error ratio in my monitoring system. So if I was on the web server, I would say that an error was from uh, 4x6 to 5x6. And uh, on, on the, on the, um, the backend side, real backend, uh, I, it was like if there was an exception uh, in, in the log. Um, and then you could use TimeLion to compute the ratio on the fly. And it works until you've got too much data. 
because that you can do only for one day or perhaps two days, but afterwards, time lie and complain, say, I cannot do it anymore. Sorry? To be honest, I don't know. I wanted to do the, demos, the demo on the real production system, but then I noticed that uh, I didn't have the proper credentials anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I cannot tell you about that. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, in that case, when you index, it should be the time when you compute the ratio. So you can get insight into the data, then you can refine that you want more metrics, or I mean very dedicated metrics. In that case, you can re-change, re-update your template so that the new data gets indexed in another way. And it works pretty well. Uh, if you are interested into Java, Kotlin, uh, Spring, sometimes Elastic, whatever, you can read my blog, you can follow me on Twitter or uh, hire me for a very hefty fee on LinkedIn. Do you have any questions?